In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I think um, you finished with Abu the second Kings chapter nine. So tonight, God willing, we'll try to finish chapter 10 and 11. Um, next week, God willing, uh, we'll do something uh, related to the Passion Week because that will be the last time uh, we have our uh, Bible study meeting before the Passion Week and Easter. After that, we're going to meet God willing after the resurrection. Right, everyone? Yeah. So that's yeah. the plan. Um, so chapter 10 starts by saying, can you please open your Bibles on 2 Kings chapter 10. Now Ahab, Ahab, remember King Ahab, that was the bad king and his wife, Isabel, okay, a few chapters ago, Elijah uh, came to them and, and told them that uh, they're going to both die and all their descendants they will not have uh, any inheritance in the kingdom of Israel. So now I have had 70 sons, big, huge family in Samaria. Remember, King, king Ahab used to be the king on the northern part of the kingdom, which is called Israel. Again, I'm going to review and remind you that the kingdom of Israel split it into two halves, north, south, right? The north side, uh, the north part um, was the Samira was the capital, the south. And that happened after uh, King Solomon died. Okay, so now we talk about the northern part of the kingdom, which is called Israel. Okay, the king at, the, at a certain point of time of the north, his name was Ahab, and he had 70 sons, big family. And Jehu wrote and sent letters to Samaria. A leader uh, sent letters to the northern part of the kingdom uh, to the rulers of Jer Jersey. Or the, 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 the leaders of Israel at that time. To the elders and those who reared a half son say, let's see what this leader will tell the North part. He will tell them, now as soon as this letter comes to you, since your master's sons are with you, and you have chariots and horses and fortified city also, and weapons, choose the best qualified of your master's sons, set him up on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. So basically, that leader sent a letter and you can read between the lines that he is threatening them. He's telling them, I know that Ahab has, has 70 sons, so why don't you pick up a king for yourselves and get ready? You have chariots, you have army, you are a big, uh, big uh, kingdom. Get ready because I'm coming to fight you. Okay? So that's kind of a threat to them. But they, they, all the leaders of Israel, were exceedingly afraid. They got this letter, and that scared them so much, and said, look, two kings could not stand up to him. They sat together, the leaders, and said, this guy had a war or fought twice, or two kings, and he won each single time. <clears throat> How then can we stand? So there is no way we can fight this guy. And he who was in charge of the house, and he who was in charge of the city, the elders also, and those who are who read the sun, sent to Jehu saying, so they replied back to the letter and said, we are your servants. They gave up. They threw the towel, as they, as they say. Okay? We are your servants. We will do all you tell us. But we will not make anyone king. Okay, we are not going to pick up a king. You are our king, and we are your servants. We are not going to take that risk and fight you. Do what is good in your sight. Do you guys remember what happened last week, right? Like, you know, the two kings, 
like when 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 one of the sons of the prophet ran into uh, uh, him into his tent and he anointed him king and told him you shall clean up remember that hmm? right and then he went out and he got rid of uh, uh, the king of the north the israel the son of ahab and then the other king of the south the son of jehoshaphat right so both armies were like he got rid of them so this is where we're coming in so now he's like okay now there is no king in the north and there is no king in the south right uh and 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 he's ready to see who else basically like show me if you if you want to flex your muscles show me that and you will see what i'm gonna do with you Right, because he told them, bring all those that are ready to fight, and I'm ready. You saw what I did with two kings, so I'm gonna also kind of like plow over you. So this is where they're coming from. You remember that? Yeah, but yeah, to kill Jezebel, but now. He killed Jezebel, he killed the, the two kings, but now there is no king. The automatic thing to happen is the successors, right? The brothers of the king, right? The sons, the other sons of Jezebel and Ahab, right? So someone has to uh, come through and become a king. That's the natural thing happens, right? So basically he's saying, if you're going to do that, bring all of them, all the successors, all the line of them. How many? 70 or it's, right? 70. 70 of them. So this is like the line of all the kings, basically. 70 of them. Okay, those 70, bring the 70. Okay? Got it? Like, basically, I'm, get, I'm, I'm ready to get rid of the whole line of uh, successors of the kingdom. Guys, if you can, please come uh, as much as possible to the front. It would be good. Would be, so we can sit in a circle as much as possible. It would be good. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> so basically, uh, he said that letter and they replied back to him. They said, well, I'm not going to pick up a king. You are our king and we are your servants. In verse 6, he received that letter from them. Then he wrote a second letter to them saying, if you are for me and you will obey my voice, take the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me at Jezreel by this time tomorrow. He said, okay, if you say that you're going to obey me, then bring the heads of the 70 sons of King Ahab. Because he wants to make sure that no one has the right to be a king, okay? By doing that, then, you know, there is no successor, basically. And meet me tomorrow at Jezri, certain place. Now the king's son, 70 persons, were with the great men of the city who were rearing, rearing them. So it was when the letter came to them they, that they took the king's sons and slaughtered 70 persons. So it was a massive put their heads in the basket, baskets and send them to him at Jezreel. Of course, if you're just coming into this, you will think like, this is so savage, right? But if you go back, remember when we were talking about Ahab and Jezebel, right? And God sent Elijah and said, you're so evil, right? And we spoke about this Jezebel like, she kind of like she's a person so evil that she was like knew the heart of the devil himself remember that right and that's why god said i'm gonna destroy you and all your children so there is no more evil after that and we read that also in revelation chapter 3 when god said jezebel the woman you know uh, uh and her children i will get rid of Right. Okay. Go on. Then a messenger came to, to and told him, saying, 
they have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, lay them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate of Tilkimu. So it was in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, you are righteous. Indeed, I conspired against my master and killed him. But who killed all this? He wants to make, to make them feel like that he did not kill them. You killed them. I did not kill these people. But obviously, in indirect way, he gave them the order to kill them. Otherwise, face me in a war. Know now that nothing shall fall to the death, to the earth of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord has done what he spoke by his servant Elijah. That, was, that happened years ago when Elijah stood before Ahab and, and Jezebel, and Elijah told them, as Abuna said, told them all what's going to happen to them and their kids. So the Bible here confirming that what has Elijah said, now it's getting fulfilled. So Jehu killed all who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men and his close acquaintances and his priests until he left him none remain. And he rose and departed and went to Samaria, who that guy, Jehu. On the way at Beth Eke of the shepherds, Jehu met with the brothers of Isaiah, king of Judah. Now, there were some visitors coming from the south from king. Remember, the south is called Judah. <clears throat> so some uh, visitors coming from the south to visit the north and to visit the king. They had no idea what happened, what happened in the north. They had no idea what happened to the 70 people. And they met that guy, Jehu. So he asked them, who are you? So they answered, we are the brothers of Isaiah. And we have come down to greet the sons of the king and the sons of the queen mother. And he said, take them alive. So they took them alive and killed them at the well of Beth Ekeb. 42 men, and he left none of them. That's too bad. Like, why did he do that? I have no idea. They had nothing to do with the kingdom of the north. Jesus, they just were there visiting, but that's how- They we... were coming to uh, see the king and his mother, Jezebel, yeah. Yeah. and they did not know. So he had to get rid of them as well. Uh, which chapter is this? Chapter, second king, chapter 10, verse 15. Okay, are you gonna follow us now? Good idea. <clears throat> now, when he departed from there, he met Jehonadab, okay, the son of Risha, coming to meet him. And he greeted him and said to him, is your heart right as my heart is toward your heart? That's another leader, big leader in Samaria. So he met him and told him, are you with me? Basically, are you, are you with me or against me? And Jehoda, Jehoadab answered, it is Jehu said. If it is, give me your hand. It is, if it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand and he took him up to him into the church. Then he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they had him right in his chariot. So Jehu, that leader, met another one. His name is Jehadab and told him, come, I want to talk to you about something. And when he came to Samaria, he killed all that he made to Ahab in Samaria. There was still few people related to Ahab, so khalas alim. Then he had destroyed them according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about uh, Jehunadab. Jehunadab is mentioned here, he comes out of nowhere. But if we want to link things, uh, you read about Jehunadab in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, God speaks to Jeremiah about Jehunadab being he's not an Israelite, but he was a great leader. And he commanded his sons to keep the commandments and, and to live righteous and, 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 and not to drink 
uh, uh, wine or um, alcohol, because that's a sign for consecrating the, my, the, his life and children's life to God. And they continued to do that for hundreds of years after he actually died. So when God spoke to Jeremiah, he, he praised Jehonadab. And he was saying, like, look at his descendants after him. For hundreds of years, they were keeping his commandments. And he's just a man. How about me, God, being a zealous God? And my people do not obey my commandments. It breaks my heart, Jeremiah. And I'm not happy with that. If anyone would like just to search it, uh, search the name in Jeremiah, and we can stop again and just read that. But this is the background about Jehunada. Beautiful guy, right? But so yeah, I'll we'll give you the background. So, so we go back to Jehoan. So let's see what, what is his plan now with the, with the Shohanada, the other leader. Then Jehu gathered all the people together and said to them, I have served Baal. I have served Baal a little. Jehu will serve him much. So he brought all the leaders and told them, listen, you know that I have worshipped Baal, worshipped idols. Let me show you how, how worshipping idols, how it should be done. Let me show you the right way. Now, therefore, call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Look at the trick he's going to do now. So he said, bring me all those who worship Baal, the, the priests, the servants, let me see how they worship Baal. Let no one be missing, for I have a great sacrifice for Baal. I want to do a big party, a big surprise, a big sacrifice for him. For Baal, so bring all the priests and the prophets. Whoever is missing shall not live. But Jehu acted deceived, deceivedly, like he deceived them because he has a plan, he had a plan in his head with the intent of destroying the worshippers of Baal. He wanted to bring all of them under one, one roof to kill them. Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. So they proclaimed it. Then Jehu sent throughout all Israel and all the worships of Baal came so that there were not a man left who did not come. <clears throat> So they came into the temple of Baal, and the temple of Baal was full from one end to the other. And he said to the one in charge of the, of the wardrobe, bring out the vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. So he brought out the vestments for them. Then Jehu and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, went into the temple of Baal and said to the worshippers of Baal, Search and see that no servants of the Lord are here with you, but only the worshippers of Baal. I wanted to make sure that no one worship God is in this room, because he's going to kill all of them. He wants to make sure only in this room, those who worship Baal only. If anyone, anyone worship God, out. So they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had appointed for himself 80 men on the outside. And he, said, and he said, if any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, whoever lets him escape, it shall be his life for the life of the other. So he told the men outside, he put 80 soldiers outside. He said, if anyone escape, I'll kill, him. I'll kill one instead of one. Now it happened as soon as he had made an end of offering, the, the burnt offering, the Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, go in and kill them. Let no one come out. And they killed them with the edge of the sword. Then the guards and the officer threw them out and went into the inner room of the temple of Baal. And they brought this, the sacred pillars out of the temple of Baal and burned them. That was a great act that Jehu did. Like, this is really good that he finished this um, practice of Baal and worshippers and brought all the, the idols outside and burned it. Then they broke down the sacred pillar of Baal and tore down the temple of Baal and made it a refused dump to this day. And when the Bible says to this day, the day that the writer was writing the book, 
not this day, not this day while he was right. Now Jehu destroyed Baal from Israel. However, Jehu did not yeah, turn just, up. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. just uh, drawing your attention to something very interesting. In verse 22, you know when he said, uh, Jehu said to the one in charge of the wardrobe, bring out vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. Like put the garments, like new garments for, does that remind you of anything, of any parable of the Lord Jesus? Huh? Uh, prodigal son, okay. Sure, that's one. Another one? Joseph? No, that's in Genesis. Yeah, parable, yeah. Huh? Uh, no. Yeah. The banquet. The parable of the banquet, you know, when he invited certain people and they did not show up. And he said, okay, bring whoever is uh, like in the alleys, on the streets, on the highways. And he said, like, put on them garments. And then he came and he found one person who did not have the garment, right, of the banquet. And he said, what are you doing here? Like, you don't have the proper dress, like, or the proper, like, uh, dress code. You know that parable? Right, you found you find it in uh, Matthew uh, chapter. Uh, let me see, chapter twenty-two, Matthew chapter twenty-two, and in Luke as well. In Luke, uh, let's see, in Luke, boom, Luke fourteen, just before the prodigal son. Remember that. So, it it this one here it reminds us of this tradition, like. There is someone in charge of making sure that whoever is going into the king has like the proper uh, dress coat, okay, or like vestment, right? So uh, it reminds us of that parable. So keep in mind. So when 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 God, when the Lord Jesus Christ mentions that uh, that parable, okay, he those are the customs of the time that whoever comes into such a big event they have to have a certain dress code nobody is allowed if they don't have that but in this case here jehu used it to kind of like point out or mark uh the 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 the, the priest uh, priests of baal okay okay verse 28 says Thus Jehu destroyed Baal from Israel, which, as I said, which is a great, great thing. However, Jehu did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, who had made Israel sin, that is, from the golden calf that were Bethel and Gerem. So the Bible says say something very, very important, that Jehu did an, an, an amazing thing that he took what the, the practice of worshiping the idols out and he burned the temple of the idol. However, Jehu did not turn away from the sins of Jerba. Um, and, and this is something we, we sometimes fit into this trap that sometimes I, I stop doing a certain sin, but keeping other sins in my life. That's what Jehu did. He did a, a great thing, but he kept some sins. He did not really take it out, completely out of his heart. And as I said, like you, when, when you think about that, you see it a lot, you know, sometimes you see, you know, I stop doing this, but keep doing that. That's no good. That's no good. Because if we leave, uh, if we leave a, a little bit little hole that's good enough for other sins to come okay and i'm gonna let you meditate on this yourself and, and think about it you're gonna see it a lot that sometimes they yeah, are okay i'm gonna stop this relationship for instance but keep that 
or stop the sin, but I cannot cut this relationship or I cannot cut this habit or this addiction. Ah, problem, big, huge problem. And, and uh, we, sometimes we feel like satisfied by doing that. Now I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not watching this anymore. I'm not going in this relationship anymore. However, there is certain things behind, you know, um, keep still, still no good. Still no good. Verse 30. And the Lord said to Jehu, because you have done well, see the Lord now is talking to Jehu. Okay? And he told him, and he told him, because you have done well in doing what is right on my side, and have done to the house of Ahab all that was in my heart, your sons shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. So God acknowledged the good work that Jehu did. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord, the Lord God of Israel, with all his heart, for he did not depart. From the sins of Jeroboam, who had Israel sin. Again, the Lord God repeated again, even though God appeared, God appeared to Jehu and promised him, and, and as if God thanking Jehu, telling him, Thank you so much for what you have done and all what you have done for me. I will let your sons stay as kings to the fourth generation, and God is rewarding him. But still, the Bible says that Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel. Verse 32, in those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel, and Hazael conquered them in all the territory of Israel. I wanna... Do you guys remember who Hazael is? Yeah? Okay. Uh, Abuna, I have a question. Uh, is it possible that you can uh, stop the recording for a sec? <laughs> That's a weird request. <laughs> okay, just a second. So just we um, so just finishing chapter ten. That what happened uh, with Jehu, like he finished and rested with his fathers and buried uh, in Samaria. Uh, Jehu has his son reigned in his place and period that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was 28 years just to conclude that so uh, next week God willing uh, will be the last Monday before going into uh, Holy Week okay so it will stop here for second king and we'll pick it up after okay um Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.